Okay, so guys, the next step um, in our pattern design is the pattern design itself. Okay, and remember I told you guys that there are two major ways of designing your pattern. The slotted form, okay, uh, for that you use an average uh, mean form of your last, okay, I would explain that to you some other time. Uh, and the second one, the second uh, approach is the last tipping approach. Now that is the most common approach in pattern design because that gives you a true representation of your last, okay? And you design everything you want on the last. You see what the shoe would look like on the last, okay? Now to start designing your pattern, you have to tape the last, all right? Now, in taping your last, oh, oh, sorry, let me just go over the things you need. You need your masking tape, you need the cardboard paper, you need your ruler, you need a flexible tape like this, that's a tailor's tape, okay? You need an eraser, a pencil, you need a cutter, all right? So, we'll proceed straight to taping our last. Start taping from across the back of your last, okay? You cross it over the middle and then start from the top here too. You cross it over the middle, here, okay? Then you cut there. So across the middle here, across the middle here. Then the next step is you put your tape over, you, you put it underneath, but it should be slight it should slightly overlap on the last one okay across the middle still across the middle slightly overlapping all right then you do the rest you do the same thing So we have our last taped, okay? Now, I'm sure you've seen in some video uh, shoemaking tutorials how this taping is done. You can't miss it because this is one of the fundamental things you need to know about designing your upper, okay? Now, to start with, there are some very basic lines that you need to have on your last to design your shoe. Um, basically, some people take the whole of the last and they design their pattern on both sides. Okay, that is totally up to you. I prefer, because I want my pattern to be exact on both sides, I prefer to sketch on one side and then transfer it, interpret it on both sides. Okay, so to do that, we would want to get to the center of the last. Okay, so that we are able to get one side of the last. Okay, now there are several ways to approach it and um, one easy way is to just eyeball your last from the middle. Of course, it's not symmetrical. It's not evenly balanced on both sides. So you have to approximate the middle. But some other persons also do this. You mark from the top, okay, and then a little spacing. You try to get the average of the middle part of the last and then you do this okay roll a straight line and you place it over these points that you've marked all right to connect them together and just like that you have your middle line all right the next thing the next line you'd want to get is your back line 
all right now this back line is a little bit more balanced so you can just eyeball it and it will be balanced okay take note it's even if it's a little bit to the side it wouldn't affect your pattern so much because of the allowances that you get to give when you're lasting okay so even if it's a little bit to the side it wouldn't be a major challenge all right so now that we have our center line marked and our back line marked also another line that is very key is our feather edge all right is our feather edge all right in our taping some parts didn't cross properly that's an error on my part so when you're doing yours please let it cross properly and be a bit more balanced okay now another line the next line that we need to get which is very important is our bump line okay and this is what you do to get your bump line now if you remember when i was explaining to you on the diagram okay to get our bump line you remember when I was explaining to you on the diagram to get our bump line with the, the the formula is seven divided by ten of your standard last length, okay? But the easiest way to get your bump line is to do this, okay? So attention back on the last. You put your your last sideways on a flat surface, okay? Then you come to the ball area of your last. And you mark the widest part of the last that is touching your flat area. All right, and make it a bit bold. This is what we just marked. That is the part that is touching. And we do the same thing for the other side. Okay, now if we mark on the last, it's not going to be so clear. So we'll put a little masking tape here so that you see it when we mark it. So we do the same thing here, all right? Then we mark on the middle area here. Sorry. All right, can you see it? The next step is to connect these two lines together. This one here and this one here. All right, can you see it? So, you connect those two lines, make it trying to make it as bold as possible so that you see exactly what I'm marking. Now, this line is our bump line. Okay, now our bump line is important because the bump line is somewhere here. It is important because it shows us exactly how low the quarter of our shoe should get here. All right. The next line we should get is our top line. Okay. Take note, we've not gotten our counterpoint here. All right. Remember, we've not gotten our counterpoint. How high? should the top be how high should the, it should this part of the shoe be in the one we're designing here all right we've not gotten our counterpoint that is this point here so remember can uh, you remember what we said the measurement for the counterpoint is is our standard last length divide by five and our standard last length is 31 centimeters 31 centimeters divide by five that one divided by five is 6.2 centimeters 6.2 centimeters so our counterpoint would now be somewhere here all right so we now that we've gotten our counterpoint what is the next thing we need to find the next thing we need to find is our top line all right that our top line the the top line of the cutter that is this line as it links to your bump your bump line so from here this line how high should it be and 
find a way to link it to our, our vamp line. And to do that, we'll divide our vamp line into two. So we measure from here to our feather edge. What we have here is nine centimeters. Can you see it? It's nine centimeters. All right, so nine centimeters divided by two is 4.5. And this is half of our vamp line. All right, and then we link the line from our counter our counterpoint, the lines rather from our counterpoint to the middle of our vamp line. All right. Sorry, I think I'm back in the camera. Now, this is what we have, okay? I hope it's clear in the camera. All right, this is what we have. Now, this is our top line. It will serve as a good guide for us to know where to place our vamp line, uh, sorry, our top line here, all right? And it, it will also let us know how low we can design our cutter here, okay? So that we don't make our cutter too narrow or too wide. If it's too wide, the facing of your shoe would be too wide and it wouldn't be balanced. If it's too narrow, there will be very little space for the foot to enter. You know, this part of the foot is the widest part of the foot. Okay, so if it's too narrow, it makes it very difficult for you to wear the shoe. And this line is very important. If it's too high, you have very little space in your facing to wear the shoe. If it's too low, it goes close, too close to the creases here. Anyways, I would explain that in our subsequent class. All right. So we have this, well, our vamp line here. Take note, this is our vamp line. This point where the vamp line intersects with the center line is called our vamp point. Okay. And this line, like I've explained, is our top line. All right. This place is our counterpoint now the next thing we need to find is the breast of our shoe okay the breast of our heel all right and remember what i told you the measurement for the breast of the heel is our standard last length divided by four is a quarter of our standard last length and our standard last length is 31 centimeters divided by four is 6.2 centimeters right sorry standard last length 31 centimeters divided by 4 is 7.75 centimeters all right remember like i explained to you a lot of last manufacturers already give you a guide with this metal here all right but then we would still want to measure okay and this is what we have 7.75 just where the metal is Okay, if you remember on the diagram I showed you, this is S, this is B, all right? So we need to get A here. And remember I told you the measurement for SBA is 90 degrees. Since we have S, we have B here, we just need to get the right angle. So you put it on a flat surface, okay? Put it on a flat surface. And you just get a straight line here. Now, I'll explain to you why this line is important. I'll explain to you why this line is important. So, it depends. With this basic form, you can design a derby like this. Okay? You can design... This is a loafer. You can design a loafer like this. You can design a loafer like this, okay? You see, you see, this serves as a guide. This line helps you to know 
the measurement here okay this point helps you to know how low you can take your line here do you get it uh-huh so these are some of the things that helps us to but some of the measurements that helps us to know exactly what to play where to place what and how to do it okay so um let's pick any design okay let's start with the derby since we have a derby sample here that we can use to guide you all right so in designing the derby okay like i as i was saying there are a few things you need to consider you know the derby the major difference between the derby and the oxford is that the derby has open lacing so the space for the lacing is totally up to you but one thing you have to observe is that since you have your vamp line here your your cutter should not go lower than your vamp line okay so you stop here okay you can go slightly lower than this line but not lower than this line slightly if you go too if you go too low it makes the opening too wide okay now remember what we said about um your vt on the diagram this is v right the van point and this is t the top of your facing and we said the measurements for your vt is 1 over 4 that is a quarter of your standard last length plus a quarter of an inch and a quarter of our standard last last length here is uh, 31 divided by 4 31 pardon me let me just do that here 31 divide divide by 4 that's 7.75 centimeters plus a quarter of an inch so let's let's get 7.75 7.75 is here plus the quarter of an inch if this is our inch and the quarter is somewhere here all right so basically this tells me that the my quarter the instep point okay would i would explain what instep is but my quarter can the facing top facing of my quarter can only be this wide if I want it to be standard okay now take note see why your a point is important because this is where you link your a point guides you to know where to link this line your quarter line with the facing of your quarter all right so the line starts from here and then from your a point it guides you to know where it begins to go up to link with the facing of your cutter are you getting it so basically from there you take it down and then you link it from your a point you can go past it a little bit but just be sure that you're within the neighborhood this line serves as a guide all right so the next step would be how to link the lower part of your cutter if it's a derby you're designing then you link it up from here and you take it to your heel link it up from here and you take it down all the way down to your heel okay now while there are measurements for this also what i typically use as a guide for me is this part of the last the ball point area now this part of the last is called the ball point here all right so i always ensure that the the, the lower part of my cutter stays on top of the ball point and it connects with the heel all right now with this you basically already have 
a design for your derby. So your standard derby looks like this. Now we can erase these lines. We can erase our vamp line. And also the top line and our SBA. Then we even up our pattern. Okay. Now, as a rule, what I do for my tongue is from the top area of my of my cutter. I add one centimeter. Top area of the cutter, I add one centimeter. And that serves as the position for my tongue. Okay, the tongue of the shoe. That serves as the position for the tongue of the shoe. All right. The next thing you would want to, to get is your eyelet position. And usually I go from one centimeter to 1.5 centimeters. In this case, I'd want to give 1.5 centimeters, which is this here. Typically, to get the spacing for your eyelets, you might want to use a divider so that you have the most accurate measurements for your eyelets, okay? Um, I don't have a divider here, so I'll just give you an idea. So I mark, this should be the first, this, is, this should be the uh, first position of the eyelet. And as a rule, I always ensure that the first eyelet is one centimeter away from the top line of my cutter all right so one centimeter away all right depending on the size of your cutter the, the size of the facing of your cutter uh, you can measure one centimeter 1.5 centimeter but for this let's go with 1.5 centimeters so 1.5 centimeter we've marked wire 1.5 1.5 centimeter and also another 1.5 centimeter all right sorry this doesn't look even i think i missed something here So 1.5 centimeters is here. You can see it here. 1.5 centimeters. Okay, let me put it this way so it's a bit more visible. It's here. Another 1.5 centimeter is here. And then another 1.5 centimeter is here. Now, this indicates to us that 1.5 centimeters is okay. All right. So, when you're interpreting this, you just need to punch these intersecting holes. You need to just punch these intersecting points as your eyelet holds. All right? And this is how you get the standard pattern for your derby. Okay? So our next class, we'll be talking about the pattern interpretation. Okay? But we'll also talk about different other pattern designs. Okay? Uh, how to design the pattern for different other styles of shoes 
Okay, there's the Oxford, the, the loafers, the Chelsea boots, and several other things. All right, but for now, we will stick to this and interpret it. Okay, so thank you so much for watching and share with your friends. Okay, thank you so much.